I'm going to talk today about, especially about asthma. Now, asthma is a very common problem as well, like with all allergies. It affects about 40% of adults at one stage of their life. They would get wheezing sometimes, or cough, or shortness of breath. Some people with asthma get problems with exercise, so only when they exercise, they get a cough. Not all asthma patients are the same. Some asthma patients get better as they get older. Some of them get worse as they get older. Some of them only get a cough, others just get a wheeze, and others may get just exercise intolerance. They cannot exercise very well. It's sometimes hard to diagnose in younger children because their only symptom would be not being able to walk properly. They need someone to carry them. They get tired too often. But at the same time, a lot of children get a lot of infections, viral infections. They get colds, and colds give you a lot of cough and wheeze as well. That's not always asthma, because if you get a wheeze and a cough with a virus, that's not exactly diagnosis of asthma. The diagnosis of asthma involves you having a wheeze and a cough without having a cold as well. And you need to have a response to what we call bronchodilators, which is Ventolin. If you get a response to Ventolin, and you don't have those symptoms uh, all the time, or have them just only with viruses, you may have asthma. Asthma, by definition, is inflammation of the lower airways. If you can imagine the lungs as being having a tree, so the tubes in the lungs, you can have a tree, and the tree has branches. Now, if you overturn the tree, you have a, a main bronchus, or a main branch, and then trees and pipes going all inside the lungs. Those pipes look like these ones. If you can have a look there, this is normal bronchus inside the lungs. Normally, the airway is open, there's not much mucus, the air comes in normally, and the muscles around the airways are relaxed. In the case of asthma, the opposite happens. You find swelling of the airways with lots of blood and congestion. You get a lot of mucus accumulation inside the airways as well. This results in cough and phlegm. At the same time, it affects the muscles around the airways. And these muscles bronchoconstrict, which means they become tighter. So the airway becomes narrower. And because the airway becomes narrower, you get wheezing and shortness of breath. When we try to treat asthma, we try to treat both things, the narrowing, the phlegm, and the inflammation. Often people take medication such as Ventolin, which is a bronchodilator. It's a very common medication. Ventolin only affects the muscles of the airways, which means it only affects the muscle around the airway, opens the muscle, relaxes the muscle, only works for about three hours or two hours. So you open up and allows the phlegm and breathing to get better. But that's not enough because you only allow yourself to breathe for a short time. So you take Ventolin frequently, but it doesn't affect the inflammation inside the airway. Here where it comes what we call prophylactic medication. Prophylaxis is using a medication, an anti-inflammatory medication, to reduce the inflammation inside the airways. So you don't get another episode of asthma or another episode of asthma too fast. It's like you becoming at the beginning on the edge of the table and with prophylactic medication, you get further away from the edge, so you don't fall too fast. Things that can give you asthma exacerbations are the following. They can include viruses or bacteria, they can include exercise, they can include pollen, environmental allergies, cats, dogs, other animals as well, and birds can give you that exacerbation. Uh, and some asthma cases, unfortunately, are not explained either. The prophylaxis in this airway could be divided into a steroid or a non-steroid medication. The steroid medications are usually inhaled. They can use, be used as a nebulizer, okay? Uh, or they could use as a spacer, for example, like this one. This spacer is used very often. It's very effective and very fast to use as well. Often, we put the medication inside, we shake, we puff, then allow the patient to breathe through the mask. It can be done very fast and very easy and without any noise, which is very, very useful for young children who don't like the noise of the nebulizer all the time. Uh, the nebulizer is another option that we could use. And then we have what we call discus, or meter dose inhalation medication, or what we call, uh, um, for example, these ones. These medication provide prophylactic medication at the same time as giving you relief from your symptoms. 
So they are used as powder formulations. Basically, they, you open, you click, you inhale, and then hold your breath, and then you breathe out. And by this, you get your topical steroid inside the airways to relieve the inflammation, and at the same time, open your airways to breathe better. There are different brands and names. I'm not gonna talk about that details, just to understand what you can use as medication. The next step of medication for asthma is what we call a biological medication, which is called Zolaire, or uh, anti-IgE medication. It's an injection again. This injection is given every three to four weeks, and it affects your IgE level in the blood. Now, IgE is the substance that causes your allergy inside the lungs. So this is used for patients who have IgE allergy only. If you have other types of allergy, you cannot use the same medication. This is again a very expensive medication that needs to be used under follow-up and monitoring of the doctor. But it does provide good relief for severe asthma, especially when we talk about the stage of asthma, stage 5. I'll talk briefly about the prevention of asthma, if time allows. You are predisposed for asthma because of your genes, but it doesn't get activated unless you get an environmental activation. So, we advise people to breastfeed. That would reduce your chance of having asthma. We advise people who have allergies to get the diagnosis and management with the allergen-specific immunotherapy that I talked about about in the past, and that would reduce your chance of developing asthma as well. Get less exposure to cigarette smokes because they can induce asthma and makes asthma much worse as well. Have natural diet and stay away from a lot of antipyretic medication. Antipyretic medication are like paracetamol. There have been lots of studies associated with increased risk of wheezing and asthma with the use of paracetamol excessively in the first year of life. Reduce your use of antibiotics, especially in the first two years or one year of life. As well, we know from many studies that the overuse of antibiotics increases the chance of developing asthma or wheeze as an adult. Basically, asthma and allergy is disease of the rich countries. So children who are born prematurely who live longer life are at higher chance of developing asthma, while in the past they would not survive. Natural life, more natural breastfeeding, and less medication as long as it's safe for the patient would reduce your chance of developing asthma in the future as well. Thank you for listening.